This is Ask Sam. I'm Sam, and this is the show where I answer your questions on love, relationships, sex, people, and everything. In this episode, we're going to talk about something really important, and that's because it is foundational to so many topics we're going to have in the future. So many questions, so many answers are going to be based around or use this information, and that is active and passive dating. Now, these are not things that are going to be a surprise to anybody, but they're concepts that we never really talk about and generally don't really think about. And because we don't, we we often overlook it. But by coming up with the right terms and words to use so that we can discuss it with each other and just think about it better, we will have a much clearer understanding of human relationships simply because we're aware of them. So what is active and passive dating. So first of all, the idea is not really dating. It's actually the seeking of people to date, right? There's the idea that someone will actively be approaching someone and trying to get a date to, to start a relationship, to start a courtship, and that someone is going to be passive and looking to have someone approach them, right? Now, in the heteronormative world, in the cis world of dating, uh, we're going to expect this to be men are active, women are passive. Of course, these are not hard and fast rules, but we all know that this is how it typically works. Now, if you're dealing with anything that's not heteronormative, if you're dealing with a uh, male-gay relationship or uh, lesbian lesbian relationships, then all these things go out the window and you actually have a lot of struggles in those communities because these uh, roles are less clearly defined and that makes things more challenging. This is actually a big benefit to regular male-female relationships simply because society has built a set of social constructs that make it just really straightforward. There is a pun in there that I'm not going to point out. Um, the whole thing is just straightforward, right? We know what we're supposed to do. And if we deviate from those rules, if you deviate as a man, everything falls apart. And if you deviate as a woman, you have ultimate control. Why women don't deviate more often? I don't know. We're going to talk about that in another episode. But so let's define active and passive dating. As I uh, do this, I think you're going to find immediately that you recognize what we mean. And clearly, you're going to say women are not passive in dating. Well, that's correct. They're not. But it's it's the way that we express it, the way that the initiation uh, happens uh, is what's important. It's not that effort is not made. A lot of effort is made. In fact, I think most people would agree that women, on average, put in far more effort, dramatically more effort, into the initiating dating scenarios than men do maybe orders of magnitude more, like seriously more, but they do so in a passive way. So let's describe this, right? And we all know what we mean. So women as passive daters are going to typically do things that make them attractive. They're going to uh, wear clothes, go to certain places, put on makeup, uh, hang out in groups with high visibility and otherwise make themselves uh, stand out and approachable. The standing out, they tend to be very good at. Approachable, maybe not so much, but these are the attempts, right? It's easy to see what women are doing to attract men. What do men do? We all know men go to the places where those girls are, right? Generally, women go to places that are predictable. They go to bars, especially on ladies' night. Uh, they go to dance clubs, especially when there's certain types of music. They go to uh, charity functions. They go to uh, school. They go to church. They go to places where you're going to congregate, right? So it's easy for the most part for men to know where women are going to be. They also know that a great number of women don't go out, and then they're just not available at that time. When men go out, they simply seek out women where they are. Men do not put in a bunch of effort to like be attractive. I'm not saying they wouldn't put in any effort, but it's not the same. And when men go to those places, they then look at the women that are there. And remember our episode on physicality in attractiveness, right? Why are relationships initiated uh, based on physical attractiveness? Go watch that episode. Just pause this. Go watch that or whatever. Um, what, but that's important. 
I'm not gonna re-explain it now. Men are gonna go to those places, let's just say it's a bar, they're gonna look at the girls who are at the bar and based on their approachability, their overall look, whether they seem like a good fit based on very, very shallow evidence, the man is going to choose whether or not to approach that girl and introduce himself, break the ice, use a pickup line, another episode on that, check it out. Um, all those things, but he's got to do it. He has to initiate that. That woman can put in any amount of effort. She can be the most beautiful woman, that she can have the best outfit, she can have the best makeup, she can be super approachable, but if nobody actually walks up to her, nothing's going to happen, right? She's being passive. She is equally flirting with, if you will, every single man and woman in the room, right? It is a blanket. Every person who's within eye shot of her is getting her passive uh, flirtation. The man has to actively seek her out and choose her and say, you are the one I am flirting with. You are the one I'm asking out. You are the one I am uh, using a pickup line on or whatever. For the man, it's active. He has to get out of his chair, go to the woman. This doesn't matter. Is it in church? Is it in a club? Is it, you know, he's the one who's got to ask the girl to dance. He's the one that has to buy her a drink. He's the one that has to ask her out on a date. All those things he has to initiate as the active dater. As the passive dater, she only has to be approachable. She'll get better results if she puts in a lot of effort, but even if she doesn't put in any effort, she's still potentially approachable. Of course, these roles are societal constructs. They are not intrinsic, right? A woman can approach a man. A man can put in a bunch of effort and peacock and attempt to be approached by women. It's not very likely to work, but you can do it. Women can get up and go break the ice and approach a man and ask him out. It does happen. It's very rare, but it does happen. So I don't want to say that this is a male and female role. I don't want to say that this is how it has to be. It is simply, these are the commonalities, but active and passive dating is always there. And it pretty much has to be. Having two active people at any given time probably isn't going to work. And that's really why society has put these in place over millennia right, is that it'd be by having one group of people who is nearly always passive and another group that is nearly always active, you're able to have some type of dating pool that functions. Dating is always very hard, right, just across the board over all time. So it's not like it used to be super easy and now it's not or whatever and, and these constructs used to work and now they don't or whatever. No, these constructs are there because they actually do kind of make sense. If you didn't know who was gonna be active and passive, if half of women were active and half passive and half men were active and half were, were passive, you would have some really complicated problems. Like, like there would be a bar full of, of men and a bar full of women same bar, right? With lots of men and women who are all single, all there for the same purpose, right? It's a singles bar. They all know why they're there. But like a whole bunch of the men don't approach the women and some of the women approach men, but it ends up being the wrong men. And, and they're, they're like, oh, you're, I was, I was trying to approach someone else and it was just, it doesn't work very well. It would kind of work. And there'd be whole groups of passive people who would just get completely left out uh, forever, right? Because the active people would sometimes find each other and the active people who find the passive people would be okay. And the active people who find the active people would be probably okay. But the passive people who, who end up not matching would just not match, right? You would fall out of the system uh, at an alarming rate and the population would plummet <laughs> because of this system. So understanding that generally it's gonna be men on the active role and generally women on the passive side is just part of the dating system. But understanding that there is active dating, the people who seek out, the people who make uh, the effort, the ones who initiate contact and the passive group, those who invite contact through being physically attractive in most cases, available in all cases, uh, is very important. And while we just described a bunch of physical situations, this exact same relationship is going to exist, and does exist, in the world of online dating. If you go on to, we'll just say Tinder, you have um, obviously the, react the interaction of both parties is similar. We look at a bunch of pictures, swipe right if you're interested, swipe left, left if you're not. But once you have a match, it is assumed that the man is going to initiate the conversation and the woman just 
just wait, right? Oh, we matched. That doesn't mean anything to a woman, right? She doesn't care that you matched. She only cares that a conversation starts 99% of the time. But for a man, when he gets a match, it means now he has to think and decide what he's going to say and initiate that conversation. And if the man doesn't, there, it's almost certain, not completely, but almost certain that the woman will never respond. She'll never look and say, well, I have a match and he didn't reach out. Maybe I should reach out. Now, there's nothing in the system that says he should be the one that reaches out and that she shouldn't, but this is the way it works because even in online dating, even where we've established that the system is equal in all reasonable ways, the social constructs that a man is going to actively approach the woman and the woman is going to passively wait until he does so is so built in, so strong that women will essentially just let it go and wait. And this is why men get more and more aggressive uh, in how they initiate that contact because it becomes a competition for that initial contact because the women are not going to uh, make any effort in the other direction. It just escalates it so that the thing they're competing against with other men is not attractiveness, it's not um, anything. It is the, the rapidity and aggressiveness of that initial contact, uh, the actual active act of, of making the connection. So that's our episode for today. And if, as always, comments. I want to see lots of comments. I want to see questions. Um, what are your experiences with this? How do you feel this works? Where did I get this wrong? Like, subscribe, tell your friends. This is get their questions. I want to know what you want to know. We'll see you next time.